I give you a moment of silence as a believer priest and dwelt by the Holy Spirit. And he's here to teach us the truth of the word of God. You, you have to be a spiritual person. It's a spiritual book for spiritual people for spiritual living. And you can't, you can't study the Bible in carnality and get there. So carnality, evidence of carnality in life is personal sin unconfessed. Could be mental attitude, could be sins of the tongue, overt sins. So to get back to spirituality where the Holy Spirit can teach you because you have, you, he is now quenched and grieved. You confess your sin, First John 1, 9, if I confess my sin or if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. That restores us into fellowship and ministry of sanctification, not salvation. And that's what's important for Bible study. So I give you a moment through your priesthood of Second Peter 2 to take care of that. Father, we're so thankful for your marvelous grace and for the freedom we have to assemble as a church. We know that our brothers and sisters in many, 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 many parts of the earth tonight cannot do this except through the underground or some other system. They don't have the freedom as we do in America. But we do live in a day when every speech is accepted except the speech of the word of God. What has happened to us in America, Father, about this freedom of speech? You know, in Athens, Paul found out they, they were the great supporters of it. Yet they kept trying to censor him. They'd allow every religion in the world to come and speak. And they allowed him. Then uh, turned around and tried to shut him down. Well, anyhow, Father, we, we're, we're thankful for the freedom they have, and I pray that we would take advantage of it to share the gospel with as many people because the only way to change a person's life and heart is through the gospel of Jesus Christ and the ministry that comes with it. So we're thankful for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, in this scripture, the only identity we have of this, which I refer to as the dictator of Palestine, the only information we have about him in third, chapter 13 is that he's the beast out of the, out of the land. Agreed? So that's important that we understand that. The background to these two is one's a Gentile and one's a Jew, in most of our opinion. Um, most of the th most of the the teachers that I've grew up under in my salvation experience, um, they either refer to this man as the false prophet, which is a scriptural identity, or the dictator of Palestine. <coughs> dictator, for many people, is a very strong word until you see these two guys operate. <laughs> The dictator kind of kind of a, a modern a modern term for this type of behavior. Dictator. I mean, we see it in relationships and schools and everything else where somebody just dominates everything. I've been called that. Probably true most of the time. Uh, students students of eschatology, studying of the last days. Students of it come to believe that the dictator of Palestine also called the false prophet out of the book of Revelation, will come from the tribe of Dan. There's a couple of reasons why they believe that. One reason is Genesis 49, 16 through 18. That's important for us. You can read that later. We've talked about this before. Um, the tribe of Dan, also probably the, the glaring reason they believe this, is that because the tribe of Dan is not mentioned within the 12 tribes of Israel in the 144,000. And when you study the tribe of Dan, you learn some interesting things. For example, in Judges 13, we meet Samson, 
we're all familiar with Samson. He was from the tribe of Dan. That's about the only good thing that you can say about the tribe of Dan. Uh, if, if you're comfortable with doing that with Samson. Um, in Judges 18, they're described as, a, as an idolatrous tribe. And that passage is well worth reading on that idea. Now, this guy has, has, is, is going to be an idolatrous guy, idolatrous right from the get-go. So that's it. And then in 1 Kings uh, 12 on your paper, in the, when uh, you have Jeroboam, you Rehoboam and Jeroboam, and uh, Jeroboam uh, was an idolatrous king. And he set up two golden calf worship centers. Now listen to this. Bethel and Dan. So you can read about that. I put those down. And so, you know, for most biblical historians, they lean really heavy on this one is going to come from the tribe of Dan for those reasons. I, I, I don't have a clue, but that I, I lean heavily that my, that way myself based on that. The title of dictator, more than likely, I mean, everybody always that I studied would just call them that and never really gave any reason why. So I'm a curious guy and I, Probably comes from Daniel, the 11th chapter, 36 through 39, where he's identified as a king, a Melech, a king. Now, he's not going to get that title legitimately, so he'd get it kind of like Herod the king or somebody, you know. Listen, I'm really serious about that, because how did Herod get his? Rome gave it to him. The ruling power gave it to him, didn't he? He didn't get it from God. <clears throat> so that, that lends credibility to this idea. The dictator of the Roman Empire and the dictator of Palestine form an unholy alliance with Satan, who in Revelation is called the dragon, and this is brought out as well in Daniel 9.27. One of the things interesting is Daniel 11, now, you'll read this, I'm sure, because of your curiosity. But in Daniel 11, verse 36, it says this. He will be successful until the time of raft is completed. And the raft that that would be identified with would be the seven bowls called the raft of God. Which is going to end in Christ coming back. In the second coming in the great battle of Armageddon. And these guys are done. Their goose is cooked. For real cooked. So I find that interesting. In Revelation 16. I wrote, put this on your paper because I think it's a good reference for you. Verses 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on your paper. Yeah, that's what I mean. I put it there because... I think it's important. I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet three unclean spirits like frogs. For they are spirits of demons performing signs, miraculous signs, which go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them together for the war of the great day of God, the Almighty. Now we know what that great war is going to be. So, I want to look at the eight characteristics again on your paper because we get the greatest look at this guy based on John's Revelation 13, 11 through. He, he, one, he is the beast that comes out of land or earth. We believe that's a reference to Jewish rather than the sea like Gentile. In v verse 11 also, he's called the, the lamb with two horns, um, that uh, what speaks like a drag uh, speaks like a what what's he do it speaks like a dragon right speaks like a dragon and 
And we know he's a false prophet, right? And so that's a big deal. Uh, <clears throat> of Jesus refers to false prophets in Matthew 7.15 in that famous identity, wolf in sheep clothing, right? That's false. He calls them false prophets. And this is an identity with that. In Matthew 24, 11, the false prophet will deceive many. And that's a big deal in this passage. In 2 Peter 2, 1, uh, in the church age, we will have false teachers uh, who will teach destructive heresies. What in our passage the false prophet in the tribulation will be, will be evil disguised as divine good. I want you to turn over to Revelation 19.20. I'm showing that chapter 13 in Genesis, not, what, not Genesis, but in Revelation chapter 13, chapter 16, and chapter 19 are going to deal with this false prophet. They won't deal extensively with it, but they will mention him. So I've, we've looked at 13. We've looked at 16. So I want you to look at 1920 for a moment. The beast was seized. The Armageddon, the second coming at Armageddon has, has transpired. I saw the beast and the king of the earth and their armies assembled to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Verse 20, and the beast was seized and with him the false prophet. Right? Who performed the signs, the miraculous signs in his presence by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone. We're talking at the battle of Armageddon. They're gone. You know what? These two guys are not going before the great white throne judgment. Right? They're going before. That's interesting. Whew, that's interesting. <clears throat> the third characteristic is really important. Verse 12 is enormously important to this man's authority and what he does. Verse 12. In verse 12, this is really important. From 12 through 16, 12 through 15 and into 16, this is really important. And I'm going to show you what happens. Because the English words keep changing, but the Greek doesn't. Eight times and nine, the ninth is suggested. From verses 12 to the end of this chapter, the word poieo is used. Eight times suggested nine. You it's the same word in the Greek, but different in English. For example, in verse 12, the word exercises is poieo. Poieo means to do. Literally, poieo. And he exercises, present active indicative, he exercises all the authority, excusia, of the first beast. In other words, all of his authority, all of his authority is attached to the first beast who is the dictator of the revived Roman Empire, just like Herod the Great's was. Right? I mean, Herod had the power only that Rome allowed him to have. And he knew it because he was connected to the emperors. All right? And they gave him a lot of latitude because he gave him he gave him right attitude. And so he he kept them he kept the taxes and everything going the way it was supposed to be. And and this is kind of the idea here. 
and he exercises all the authority of the first beast. Their, their, his authority, his exclusia, that is his authoritative power, is connected to Rome or the first beast, right? I mean, you don't have to agree with it. <clears throat> in his presence, okay? Now, I'm still in verse 12, and he makes, you know what that is? Foyeo. That's the same Greek word. Foyeo. And he makes the earth and those who dwell in it, in other words, the whole world, to worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. All right? <clears throat> and he performs, guess what word that is? Foyeo. Look at how the English is just trying to, same word in the Greek language, poieo, they're all present active indicatives. And he performs great miraculous signs so that even, so that, so that he even makes poieo, fire come down out of heaven to the earth. Verse 14, and he deceives the whole Oh, and he deceives all who dwell on the earth because of the miraculous signs which he, which was given to him to perform poieo in the presence of the beast telling those who dwell on the earth to make poieo an image to the beast who had the wound of the sword, the fatal wound of the sword at, yet had come back to life. And there was given to him uh, uh, to give a spirit of breath or uh Numa, to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast might even speak and cause poieo, and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed, and he causes poieo, poieo, and he causes all, and then he goes through that, and remember what I told you. I told you that this word he provides, that's poieo, transferred, that's understood from verse 16. Are you with me? That having, having uh, poieo is called eight times, but the ninth one is understood. Agreed? If you kept up with numbers. Man, so, and, and listen. Every bit of this is connected in verse 12. Now, that poeo, that, that, it doesn't change, but it, see, trying to change to make, make sure that we understand the flow of the story, performing, causing, doing, that's just the way you do it in English. But not in the Greek. It's poeo every time. Why is that important to a guy like me? I'm looking for that. When I study, I'm looking for uh, markers. I'm looking for markers. When I found the Kai, I went, whoa. I'm familiar with it, with that type of use in Genesis. When I saw that, I went, whoa, I wonder if I got going something here. Sure enough, I had it. Then I start looking at my Greek language and I got poeo, 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 poeo. Where's the tacos? And uh, I went, whoa. I got something else going here, haven't I? Would you not agree that these are these are mark these are Greek markers, man? You would never see these in English, would you? No, you think these are they're different English words. You think they're probably different words, but they're not. They're di they're a different look at them to try to get you to see the flow of what's going on. But in the Greek language, these are markers. I mean, these are big time markers. Now, let me show you something. What's really interesting about them? This thing, these markers begin in verse twelve. And they begin with, and he exercised all the akusa. They, every one of them are, are the execution, the exercise of his excusia. And where did that come from? Well, it came from Satan, but it was commissioned to him through the dictator of the revived Roman Empire, right? In verse 12. Right? Now look. And he exercised all the authority of the first beast in his presence. This, this word in his presence is an awesome thing when it's used with the Lord. 
It's an awesome thing when it's used with a Roman emperor. Because this is what it is. I mean, the Roper ever the Roman emperor, his shadow from wherever he was was cast over his kingdom. There was never a time or a place under his rule and his in the kingdom that his authority couldn't reach you. His authority could reach down to the smallest village and get the least person in it if he had to. Oh, please, you know something about Roman history. This, is, this phrase, in the presence of, is also used with God, who has that authority. And this, these two guys are emulating that concept as false uh, leaders. They're, they're leaders of the satanic system, not the God system. See, Satan runs dual on this whole deal, doesn't he? I mean, he understands how important worship is. He understands how, how important God is. So he puts all this stuff into this, these guys. Right? And listen, it's all a disguise. Spiritual people can see through it. Carnal people can't and unbelievers can't. The natural can natural man, the na the natural man can't see through it. But the least of those with spiritual sight can see it all. See how important it is to be spiritual. Listen, it used to be a saying when I grew up about being blindsided. Now, I learned. I learned the reality of that concept when I played football. Running down the field on a kickoff, and all of a sudden, I was my lights were out. I never saw it coming. I got blindsided. Back in those days, they didn't call it concussion. They called it, your lights are out. You just got your bell rung. Are you seeing stars, they would ask you. You wonder why some of us, well, that's a... <laughs> so, look, here's what Poyatho has done for us. It has established his whole system of authority Verse 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You understand that? The exercise of his exclusia. And he's linked up, the devil has linked him up with the dictator of the revived Roman Empire. And he, and listen, halfway through this whole deal in mid trib, the God allows the demonic forces of of um, the uh, Noah's day, the flood, to come out and wage war. Don't you know that was a happy group of people to get out? What do I have to do? Go fight? Thank you. I mean, this is. Whatever you knew about the tribulation. And whatever, how bad you ever you would think it might be, you don't know the half of it. Neither do I. Every time I read it, I go like, whoa. Oh, my goodness. You know, a bad day for us is a snow day. Well, anyhow, I want you to remember that poyeto, and I tried to show them to you, right? You didn't pay any attention, but that's all right. Um, you know, that's all, that's all right. Al? Yeah, they're people, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a figure of speech. Well, we're in about, we're in about less than 13. <laughs> well, you can't visualize it and get it. 
You can't visualize and get it. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way to, to identify who he is out of prophetic teaching, like out of Daniel and such. Yeah, they're human beings. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's just the title they're given. The only basis is one of two things. They're either a fallen angel or a human. Yeah. Yeah. They're human because, listen, the beast thing comes out of Daniel. We've, we've just studied that. Uh-huh. These aren't fallen angels. The, be the beast is a dictator of a revived Roman Empire, and the other guy is a false prophet. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, they're, good. they're man. They're anthropos, the Bible said. In, in, in this one, it said they were a man. He, he will have the name of him. He will bear the, the mark will be the name of the man. Well, they're possessed by Satan. Yeah, I was a big guy, and they, and they're and they're demon possessed. It says that and they the they're demon possessed. I mean, I don't know how many's in them. They got to be a bunch of, right? They and when they open their mouth and and demon spirits come out. You know what's an illustration? Yeah, sure. Yeah, these are these are two of the lieutenants. They're probably higher rank than that. These are two commanding generals. These are four stars. And Satan, of course, would have five. You know, he's yeah. the big guy. I mean, yeah, it's all right. So, that's why. On your paper, look at verse 12. Look, look over there, looking at the, uh, the uh, characteristics. Look at my third one, right? See the word empowered? Look at verse, look forth. The fourth one, empowered. Fifth one, empowered. Sixth one, empowered. Seventh one, empowered. Eighth one, empowered, right? You know why I put that there? There you go. Verse 12, right? And poeo. Poeo. See, that's what makes me, I love languages because of this stuff. I mean, my juices, I mean, I just get, I just get nuts. It's kind of, kind of probably like Jones when he comes up with, you know, somebody gives him some words and say, could you put this in? All of a sudden he wakes up one morning and he goes, D -d 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 -d, and all of a sudden he's got music to a, a bunch of words. That amazes me. I mean, how, how do you think me, music up? I mean, I can think it up because I've heard it a hundred times. That old black magic. Man. <laughs> but I, I'd never been asleep and woke up and went like, woo. But I know some people can, and that's a wonderful thing. <clears throat> uh, how do you think music? I don't know. But that's not my study tonight. Oh, this the statue. The statue that bear the the name. The name will bear the number and all that. A good example of that, and I wrote it down here. Is I'm I'm at number seven, by the way. Uh, down here, Daniel three. That's that famous uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They got thrown in the fiery furnace, right? You know why? You know why? Because they wouldn't bow down. Listen. You can always, ego. Nebuchadnezzar, you know how big his ego was? This statue was 90 feet tall. <laughs> 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. Now, you engineers in here, you know that. 
it, that took a whole bunch of engineers to make sure that baby didn't fall over, huh? I mean, I want it 90 feet tall. They said, well, okay, it'll have to be nine feet wide. That is, re that is really a big statue, isn't it? 90 feet. Now, let's say, how many stories is that? Nine? Nine stories high. I guess we probably got a building in Birmingham nine. We got a Birmingham. What, give me a nine-story building in Birmingham. Anybody know? Rick, you down there. Right, <laughs> few. Hospital. Oh. Mm. Twenty-three. I had nine's a large. Yeah. Eight. Well, that's close. But close wouldn't be enough for Nebuchadnezzar, would it? <laughs> that cost you. That cost you your head. Give him eight. Listen, that's something. And, and gold. That's probably why he made it ninety feet tall, so nobody steal it. I bet you that's not one anybody would want to take down, huh? I mean, wouldn't you like to be in the community he put that in? Huh? That'd take an army to move it, wouldn't it? I don't know how much that'd weigh. Solid gold? No, I don't know if it, it's a, somebody's back pocket in it. Uh, but anyhow, um, and, and that's a wonderful story. It's well worth reading again. You know how a band would come, a marching band like the, you know, the Alabama, uh, what are they called, the Million Dollar Band? A guy with 90-foot statue full solid gold would have a big band, wouldn't he? Have a big statue and, not, and a small band? You know, three Mexicans come out and, I mean, that's not going to work. <laughs> right? Pushing a taco stand. For all those in Mexico, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. So, got to, he's got, you know, you think got small, but he's got, I mean, it, they even talk about the different instruments that he required. And he, he got this big marching band come out. And uh, as soon as they heard the music and the band going, then everybody bowed. That sounds like our football players already, doesn't it? The anthem starts and they bow. It's a great story. But you know the part that's good? Here's the part that's good. There's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel. Four guys. They're not bending no knee. Not to that one. So they bring him before Nebuchadnezzar. They said, God, I love this. Oh, I mean, if we had this kind of stuff, we wouldn't have a bunch of senators resigning in the middle of their tour of duty. The God we serve is able to save us but if not, but if he chooses not to, Nebuchadnezzar, know this. We serve and worship only one God. So they threw him in the furnace. And boy, did they not have it right? And they come out of the furnace. The hair isn't singed. Their clothes don't even smell like smoke. I couldn't ride with my mother from the house to the grocery store and back without having my clothes. I'd go home and go like, oh, geez. I love that story. Of course, it's not true. Of course, it's a, it's a fable. It's, it's some of this gobbledygook stupid stuff, right? I hope not. Right? I'm being facetious, people. So somebody reached in the back pocket there. 
I'm being facetious. Whatever that is. <laughs> Sounds good though, doesn't it? Yep. Yep. My biggest problem is I get a name and I can never get it out of my mouth. When I do, it's wrong. Well, that mark of the beast, what they call the mark of the beast, karagma, means to impress, like like maybe like a, a tattoo would be, or a stamp, or a graven. Uh, like um, a graven would be like, um, what do you do it with a cow or a horse? Brand, like branding. It may not be that cruel. It may be something simpler. I'm just saying the word. But listen, you know what that mark did? Listen to me now. This is really important for you and me. It controlled every aspect of their life. It took away every sense of freedom. Look, I wrote, I wrote some things down that would be relevant. Well, I thought I did. I thought I did, but housing, like housing, education, health care. Uh, well, all the things that we're, we think we ought to have. Income, a, a commerce, every aspect. Listen, they took away all the five divine institutional freedoms that we have. They took them away and gave you pudding. They gave you pudding or slop. It's a, I don't know what's wrong with us. What is wrong with us? They took every, this, that mark of the beast, you, you, I mean, you, you had the number of babies they wanted. You married who they wanted. I mean, you got educated the way they wanted to educate you. You didn't have a choice of education. They said, you know, we know of many nations that live that way today, right? Communist and, and so highly socialized. They're, but they're dictators. See, this is the concept of dictatorship. This is where this whole idea comes from, these two guys being called dictators. If you watch how they maneuvered and managed people, that's the way it was. So, in closing, uh, did you notice the point when the dictator of Palestine was empowered for his work against the plan of God? You remember that? What was it? Excusia, right? Excusia me. And empowered. Did you notice who empowered him? Well, two. The dictator of the rival Roman Empire, right? And of course, Satan. In fact, in the, it says that the dragon, the dragon gave him the power, the authority, the throne. Mess. And then remember Poieo. Now in closing, we read in Revelation 19, 20 and 21, that their, their end of their life was most unusual of all human history. The only two people I know in the Bible, personally, now it could, there could be, I mean, I, I studied a lot, but the more I studied, the less I know. <laughs> I don't know how that works either. But apart from this story, Apart from this tribulational idea here of these two guys, everybody else that dies is going to go, as an unbeliever, is going to go by, before the great white throne judgment. Except these two guys. He's going to capture them in warfare of Armageddon and throw them alive, right? That's right? So what it says. Throw them alive into the lake of fire. That's where everybody goes after the great white throne judgment. You're talking about Revelation 20. Whoa. I don't know about you, but... Yeah, yeah, right. They're good, but everybody else is going to be put in, put in cold, hot storage. I was going to say cold storage, and hot storage... 
Yeah. In fact, we, we don't know of anybody that's going to be there when they get there. Right? And, and, do, and we know why the lake of fire was designed. It was designed for whom? Satan. Satan. These guys are going to, they're the first two guys. Of course, that's discussed in Revelation 19. Well, let's close in a word of prayer and then we're going to have our, our, our prayer time. Father, we're so thankful for these that have come and studied with us tonight, both by automobile and the internet. And I pray tonight, Father, that the Holy Spirit would minister this. I do not believe personally that we will be in the tribulation. I believe we'll have bleachers. We'll be in the bleachers, not on the streets. But boy, Father, I'm telling you, this is going to be seven years like the earth has never known when the wrath of God is going to be poured upon them. And what is interesting is those who don't have the mark of the beast are going to be martyred. And they're going to have a special role in the millennial age, according to Revelation 20. And rightly so, dear God, and rightly so. The price. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you spared him. You didn't put him in a fiery furnace. But everybody in tribulation will go through the fiery furnace. Many, many Christians. By that I mean believers in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are going to go through it. They are going to go through it. And Father, you're going to reward them. The medal of honor. If there was ever a group that deserves the Christian Medal of Honor for warfare, it would be this group of people. I can't imagine. I salute him. For us, Father, we need to be on our toes. We need to be about your work. We need to be busy in our generation not to lose what all the generations before us have brought to us on the grace basis. And to carry this to dying grace is important for us. Be vigil. To be vigil in preaching the gospel and sending as many Gary and, and Rick and others that are willing to go when called. Here am I, send me. I salute them. Thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen.